This is part two of the flood frequency analysis video series. If you haven't watched part one, I highly recommend start with part one because we are going to use equations that were explained in part one of this video series. Since we already talked about steps one and two in the previous video, in this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the empirical frequency in other words, how to calculate exceedance probability or capital P using Weibull formula that I showed you in part one of this video series. All right, let's go to Excel and I will show you how you can use the data that you have downloaded to calculate exceedance probability. This Excel sheet shows the data that we downloaded and then processed. So we have column A to be date and column B to be uh, peak flow in CFS cubic feet per second. This is our Q. All right, the next thing that I want to do, first of all, before adding any other columns, I'm going to add a couple of rows over here. These rows will help me to put some parameters in here later. For example, if I want to add N, which was the number of the years over here, I can write it over here, and this N can be easily calculated using the count fun function to count all these different rows and it will give me a number right over here. So this is the uh, years of record that I have. All right, the next column that I wanna add over here is going to be the sorted value of discharge. So I'm gonna say this is sorted Q and the unit for that again is CFS. So what I'm going to do in a nutshell is Basically, first of all, I'm going to copy and paste all of the data that I have in column B right over here. Now, the difference is that I want this column to start from the largest flow rate all the way to the smallest flow rate, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select all these flow rates. And again, to select one specific column and the numbers that I want to, I hold shift, or I hold control shift and then press down arrow to select what I want to. And then if you go under sort and filter, we want it to be sorted from largest to smallest. It is important that we want to continue with the current selection. We don't want to expand selection to the other columns. And then sort. Now you can see the largest flow rate in CFS is right over here, and the smallest flow rate in CFS is right over here. Perfect. Now, the next column that I want to add is rank. So we're going to, and rank, if you remember, was M. In Weibull equation, this little M is the rank. So we want to rank all these flowers from the largest, which is number one, all the way to the smallest. So if I rank this, logically, the last one should be 111, because we know that N here is equal to 111. All right. And the last thing that I want to calculate is the exceedance probability. So I want to write exceedance probability. And I'm going to write this as P and the unit for that is going to be in percent. Okay. This one is, I just need to use the, the Weibull formula that I have written for you right over here. Uh, I have the rank and I have N, I just need to write this formula and multiply this by 100. That gives me um, a percent. Okay, so let's write this down. M is the rank divided by N plus 1. N is over here. I'm going to press F4 to fix that cell. Plus 1. And then this should be multiplied by 100 to give me the percents. And then I'm going to double click on this small square over here to have the percentage for all the others. Okay, so now I have all these percentages. These are my exceedance probability for a specific um, flow or specific Q. You can see there are many digits after a decimal point, right? Two decimal digits are enough for me. So in order to do that, I'm going to round uh, all these numbers. And the um, function for that in Excel is round and then you can see the first one would be the number i already have the number it asks me how many number of digits do i want to have after decimal points i'm going to say two and then close the brackets 
right now I only have two decimal digits after that again I'll do it for all rows and there we go perfect so this is um, the empirical probability or the exceedance probability for specific values of Q now I want to visualize this we are going to insert a chart in order to insert a chart and show visualize this data I'm gonna go under insert and then add a scatter chart all right once I have this uh, empty chart area I'm gonna right click on it and add data so we want to add our x-axis would be probability so I'm gonna select the first one and then control shift down arrow and then the y value is going to be the sorted cues the sorted discharge values okay, select the first one control shift down arrow and then okay and then click okay and once more okay okay so this is the value that i got from zero to 100 percent and these are the values of um, peak flow from zero all the way to about the largest flow. okay so let me um modify this chart make it look way better and then i will come back over here and talk about this i'm not going to pause the video i'm going to change the speed of the video make it faster so you can see how i'm going to make this graph a little bit look better All right, this is the final result. Notice that my y-axis is logarithmic. So I have a logarithmic y-axis over here. Um, you can read this like this. So let me add a line over here for 20% exceedance probability. I'm gonna change it to, but there we go. For 20% exceedance probability, the flood that you get or the stream flow that you get is right over here. Perfect. So this would be whatever this number that is right over here is, that number is your um, discharge for this specific exceedance probability of 20%. Okay, so this discharge, right, the exceedance probability associated with that is 20%. Let's interpret this 20%. This means that there is a 20% chance or 20% probability that this specific discharge over here is equaled or exceeded in any given year this is how you read numbers off of this chart this graph that i have right over here now our next step is to add the statistical distribution to fit a statistical distribution to the data that i have on this chart every single one of these points represents one of the data that i have in this table now we are going to use a specific type of statistical distribution i'm going to use the log pearson type 3 distribution and i will show you how you can add that into your data and have the statistical distribution alongside with the data on the same graph